after the breakup, being able to separate what happened and acknowledging the loss and being able to grieve that, but being able to separate that from what is actually true. God has something so good in store. So many times because women I've worked with have faced rejection, they then project that to everyone else. But just because there was rejection in all these places doesn't mean there's always gonna be rejection. If every guy had always rejected me, but Caleb didn't, Caleb's my guy. We get to decide what happens next. Will this make me better or bitter? If you've been through a heartbreak recently or previously, you know that it is stinging. Sometimes you think, what did I do wrong? When is it gonna stop hurting? Where do I go from here? It can feel like this current moment is the feelings and the angst you're gonna have for the rest of your life. What I wanna encourage you in is that God is near to the brokenhearted, that there is hope for the future. No matter what actually unfolds or your circumstances are, here and now and going forward, I want this episode to be a reminder that there is hope that there will be brighter days, that even in the midst of trials, that you can be radiant. Our guest today is such a testament to that truth. She just radiates this sunshineness that I like to say, it's this joy and this peace that she exudes. And you would never know the amount of stuff she's been through previously and even recently. There is a time for grieving, for, for mourning, for lamenting and crying out. But what's amazing about the gospel is that we don't have to tune that off and pretend it's not there. But in the midst of that, we also can have this peace that makes no sense, this joy, because there is a future ahead of us, even past our days on this earth. And as we welcome Stephanie Rouse back for her second time being on the Dear Future Husband podcast, I hope that that's what you walk away from gleaning and, and having this redemptive empowerment in. You know, the feeling of heartbreak can range from a slew of circumstances. Maybe you were engaged and you had to break it off because of something that happened without your knowledge, or maybe you had to come to reality with the situationship that you were entertaining isn't <laughs> going to be a real relationship. The emotions associated with these heartbreaking ideas or situations, again, from wherever they come, can leave us feeling detrimented. And what I want us to do is one, be able to process through them, be able to recognize who we are still in the midst of, of whatever we're facing and to look towards the future. Maybe that new hope for the future is, I'm just gonna get back out there again and try dating. Let's just start there. Or it's, I've had my heart shattered, but I'm gonna still believe that there is a man of God waiting for me that will treat me right despite what I've seen. Maybe it's I'm grieving the loss of a loved one and it feels like my heart's too crumbled to even love again, but I'm gonna believe that God can heal this and that he sees me, he's with me. Wherever you're coming from, I pray that Stephanie's words are an encouragement to you, that you find comfort in the testimony she shares and the scriptures that we bring up. And, and ultimately this can be a time for you just to turn off the noise, to get alone with what you're feeling, even invite God in, pause this conversation right now, invite God in and say, Lord, will you speak to me through this and tell me where you wanna lead me? Let's welcome author and my friend, Stephanie, to the podcast again. Well, I usually say welcome to the podcast, but now I get to say welcome back, Stephanie. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Of course. I'm so excited to be back. You know, I literally had to remind myself to press record because we were just catching up and talking. And um, it's so fun when we get to bring back people and for me to bring on friends. So thank you for coming. And, you know, this this topic is a little bit more daunting or in the field. So I love starting it off with laughter and with joy. So I just have to ask you, you told me a highlight of your day today. <laughs> that I'm sure no one would guess. What was the fun thing that you got to do this morning? Oh, this morning I got to cut my 90-year-old grandpa. He has dementia and he wouldn't let anyone else cut his hair. So I got the honor of cutting his hair and 
He looks very handsome. He says, don't make me, they're gonna make me look like a baldy. No one else can touch my hair. So I think he was happy with it. Well, I'm so honored you would come to us after your barber shop morning. If you don't know Stephanie yet, she is amazing. She is an author. She is a friend. She is a counselor, a relationship. I mean, there's so many words I can put on here, but you love to share and mentor women around relationships, be that single and healing from a breakup or walking into a new stage of better relationships, leaving the bad patterns behind. Uh, I feel like I could cut the episode right now and some of you would be like, yeah, I'm going to go follow her. I'm going to reach out to Stephanie. (laughs) I need some girl talk there. I want to dive into this topic today because, you know, summer is kind of the time of dating. Maybe some people started dating or had hopes of meeting someone and either they didn't have the relationship end up like they wanted to, or they found themselves heartbroken. And it can be hard to know how to process the harder things in life. I fear that the social media age have the advantages of it that it does. It's made it harder for us to have time to really process stuff or understand like emotional regulation. And so I want to offer a space for me just to play devil's advocate here for someone that is maybe walking through that or walked through in the past and thinks they never really healed from it, how to heal from heartbreak or grief and have a joy that, as believers say, surpasses all understanding. So my first question would be, when you go through a breakup, Stephanie, as you walk with women that have been in this or you went through it yourself in the past, Besides grabbing the ice cream, what's the first thing we should be doing to start that healing process? Mm, Christian, I love that you're talking about, you know, some things that are uncomfortable to talk about. And it's something that's so difficult that I actually uh, heard recently that at jobs, there's maternity leave, there's grieving for someone that passed away, they're putting in breakup lost time. No way. Yes. And this is more recent, but people are acknowledging the impact of a relationship and how there needs to be time to grieve. Even workplaces, and I believe they're secular workplaces that are acknowledging that they need to give grieving time for that. I just, I, this was only a couple of days ago that I heard this and I, it was on the news and I was like, wow, people are recognizing that we need to give ourselves that space. And mm-hmm. sometimes I've seen so many of my clients, even if they're in a situation ship or they're just, yeah. they try to be like, well, why I shouldn't be sad. Like it really wasn't anything anyways. I, they don't give themselves the permission to be sad or they try to just mask over it. So mm-hmm. I would say the first thing is to acknowledge the loss that it's a loss. And so the first thing is acknowledging our heart before God and just acknowledging that loss is painful and disappointment is painful. And we don't have to sugarcoat that. And as we acknowledge that first before God and sometimes go to the layers of those things, he's just so faithful to sit with us, you know, sit with us when we read his word, as we just spend time just hearing what he has to say about it um, and just having his identity spoken. Because another thing with breakups, it really hits to so many of our core toxic thoughts mm. in our heart. It, you know, feelings of rejection, feeling like maybe God doesn't have good things for me. Maybe, you know, this mistake because of this part of me, no one will ever love me. There's so many lies that can be brought to the surface once a relationship doesn't work out the way that we think it should. So that first step of acknowledging that and maybe taking some of those extra beliefs, those toxic thoughts to God as well. Um, But it's, you know, but it's giving that time and space to acknowledge that. Yeah. I love that you're touching on that too. And I'm kind of going to jump, jump point to something is the toxic yeah. thoughts I feel like are really key. Yeah. I forget his name, but he's a part of the, the, the Ramsey group. He's, gosh, he has one of the top podcasts. I think it's like John something. I'll fill it in here in the show notes or something. But he was talking with a caller calling about some struggles they were having in their marriage. And she was like, well, my, my husband's always doing this because he doesn't want to spend time with me. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, 
let's address what's actually happening here when we go so far as to say, well, they broke up with me because I'm not good enough. Or, yeah. you know, if I had been as, as pretty as so-and-so, this wouldn't happen. When we personify our insecurities or our fears, that it, that hinders our place of actually healing and processing the relationship. So when you're talking about toxic thoughts, what are the ramifications or the guardrails that you try to help people see that lens through so they don't go off course. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's so true what you're saying and seeing it the other way, you know, seeing it when we see, when we believe those toxic thoughts and then the way that we cope, which the book called Wholehearted Love that me and Caleb just wrote, it talks so much about that. And it talks so much about how we cope in ways. And sometimes it can just look, normal to people on the outside, but that we can cope in ways that um, are really doing ourselves a disservice. But a lot of times in coping, it can even just reinforce some, some bitterness in our heart as we hold on to a lie. Say you believe the lie, no one, I'm never going to be good enough. And so after the breakup, depending on how the person copes, they might just withdraw from everyone. And they were like, okay, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do anything. I just, I don't want to see anyone. I like, God, I'm even going to withdraw from you. And they feel more isolated. They feel more alone. Mm -hmm. They feel more unloved. So it's perpetuating this cycle and really reinforcing the belief versus being able to separate what happened, like the breakup and acknowledging the loss and acknowledging that's hard and being able to grieve that, but being able to separate that from what is actually true? Like the true part is no matter what that person decided to break up with you, God just, you know, God has something so good in store and he hasn't forgotten about you. He loves you. And also, you know, someone that you would want to be with would choose you and want, you know, mm -hmm. be with you too. And I think so many times because women I've worked with have faced rejection from um, one or two people, three or four, and they then project that to everyone else. And they th mm -hmm. say, because I was rejected here, 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 and they can point to it. And it feels so real because it was their experience and mm -hmm. they feel it. But just because there was rejection in all these places doesn't mean there's always going to be rejection. If every guy had always rejected me, but Caleb didn't, like, why would yeah. I want any other, you know, Caleb's my guy. So I'm so happy, you know, the perspective of not projecting whatever the pain is on everything else mm -hmm. and then on yourself as well. And so kind of that safeguard of what lies, I'm, what am I believing? What story am I telling myself about this? Am I telling myself that I'm never going to find something else? I've never have hope. I'll never be in love again. I'll never have the future I wanted that if that's a story they're telling themselves or you're telling, you know, whoever's listening, they're like, well, maybe I tell myself that story. Um, mm -hmm. A guardrail is, Hey, what's a story that's more closely aligned to the heart of God? Because mm -hmm. if we're not telling ourselves the stories that align closest to the heart of God, we're not believing his truth. You know, we're not believing how he sees us and how he sees our situation. So, mm -hmm being able to work with a lot of clients right after some of them is very soon after a heartbreak. And it's just incredible to be able to work with them and put up those guardrails, like you said, and be able to switch the story that's playing on mm -hmm. in our mind. That's it's a tape that keeps going and going. And what we say to ourselves matters. And then we act in it. However, what we're believing, we have to act out. You can't believe, Oh, I'm so unlovable. Never find anyone. And then just have that go nowhere. That's going to yeah. that's going to show up in how we treat ourselves, others, and how we res you know relate to God. I love that you point this out in your your new book with Caleb. Again, it's called Wholehearted Love. If anyone's wanting to get that, you point out the danger of letting yourself sit in that camp for too long. It will infest into other areas, even to your relationship with God and. You know, you and I know if we see our relationship with God different, we're going to see ourselves different and incorrect and really almost self sabotage that hope of the love that we did want. Again, I'm putting words into your mouth at this point, but it's a snowball effect that we really want to tackle um, when it's a small snowball <laughs> before it grows big. And this is easier to point out in other 
people sometimes. And so I think that's why community is really important, especially in the areas that feels vulnerable um, and relationships particularly because I – we could see we see this more in movies. I think of the girl broke up with the guy. They dated for however long, and she's like, "It's two years later, and she's just still at the family gathering, going, no one's gonna love me like Johnny, and I'm gonna be alone forever.'" And they're like, "Johnny treated you terribly. Like, there's better guys out there. You just need to get out of this loop that you're telling yourself." So, I love that you're saying, "Let's actually get back to what is the truth." Let's. Yeah approach this sooner rather than later. Do you feel like some people, I know you mentioned we don't really allow ourselves to experience the grief or experience the loss. Do you feel like some people shame themselves from thinking, I can process this, or maybe there's other things that factor besides just me being the problem? What are the common things you're hearing that would keep people from wanting to do that that deep dive? That's such a good question. I mean, depending on the client I work with, it's different. You know, there's some that I get to see like very soon after a heartbreak. If that's you right now listening, that's such an amazing time to not waste and just really make that decision of once we face some sort of disappointment, whether that's heartbreak, whether that's whatever sort of loss, we get to decide what happens next in a lot of ways. Like we sometimes can't control fully, you know, whether that person broke up with us or that disappointment, but that next step of, will this make me better or bitter? Will I become more loving, more kind, more like Jesus through this hardship? Or am I going to go further away from him and more into the dark? And I see when people are walking sooner into that, you know, obviously that's incredible. And I see God just, it's, it's such a, um, the heartbreak in Jesus's hands, he can do mm-hmm. so much. But if someone's sitting here and they're like, well, it's, I've waited so long. I just kind of have like wanted to mask it. Cause that, you know, that's too, I've had a, a client just, I saw the other day and it was 2019 and she has never grieved it, mm-hmm. never processed it. And 2024, and she's been, it's mm-hmm. been a place of being stuck and, she said, like, I'm so mad I didn't reach out to you in 2019. Like, I'm so, she had, like, a lot of shame and regret of that. But I also said, you know, even in that, I believe that God wastes nothing and gets you ready for something good. So even in that time where you feel like, why did I waste time? What did I do wrong? I believe God is so faithful to, he can, he's the great healer and he can do what he wants to do. And I I also say this to my clients a lot because I think when people feel like they've wasted time in the grieving or they've gone to things and coping, like, you know, some, some of the women I get to work with, you know, they say, Hey, like after this breakup, honestly, I just hit rock bottom. I just started hooking up with guys. Like that wasn't my character, but I just needed to feel loved. And I did a lot of things that were outside of what felt okay for me to do. Like it wasn't inside of my integrity and I didn't feel peace doing it, but it just, that's just how I got through. And now look at how damaged I am. Like, so what's the point now? Like I'm just too damaged and nothing's too damaged Mm -hmm. with God. Like nothing's too broken with him every day, every moment. It's just that choice of like, here you go, God, here's my brokenness and he can make it new. And I tell, I tell them, I'm like, God is so much better that a GPS. There's so many times when I was out in LA by myself, I, you know, I would drive all over the place by myself and I would make the wrong turn so many times. (laughs) (laughs) Which is easy to do in LA. (laughs) Oh yeah. And I'm like listening to music, miss the turn, but it's amazing how so many times the GPS would reroute me and get me to the right destination. And sometimes in the same amount of time Mm. and how much better is God? than a GPS. So if someone's facing shame today and feeling like I've waited too long or I've gotten too far off course, or even this relationship, like this relationship got me too far off course. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I don't know who I am, or I don't know this. It's like, God is way better. As long as we just need to listen to him. Yeah. And he's better than a GPS. He can get us to the right destination where he wants us to go. 
sometimes in the same amount of time, you know, he's, he's that amazing. And so to, that really breaks the shame off. And as we cling to that truth of like, okay, I, all I need to do is just start with God. Let me just hand this to him, walk with him and walk with people, um, a counselor, Christian friends, what that are wise that can walk with me so that I can be on the right track again. And I can be walking, you know, in peace to the great things he has. I think it's so good that you highlight peace too, because that really does, I mean, it does a number on our, our fears, our insecurities, our doubts. And when we talk about that peace that transcends all understanding, it's Philippians uh, four seven, I believe, and it says, "In the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ." And so, I know that's like, yes, that sounds amazing. I need that peace. It's like, but but your heart and your mind has to be in Christ. And when we are rooted in that, it's, well, I'm unlovable. No, but but Christ died for you, saw you as lovable, even in our trespasses, in our yeah. sins. And so, I think that's. If we could say anything, if I could say anything for this episode is like if we are tying even our heartbreak, our our longings, our dissatisfaction back to God, one, he can handle it. He's his shoulders are much stronger to carry the emotions of the world than ours are. But then two, he can give us peace, which is to me like that GPS you're saying, okay, well, God, I, I didn't get this or it didn't turn out the way I thought. Okay, let's let's course correct and we're still gonna go on my path for you, we're still going to, you know, get get you where you need to be. I'm thinking of the me in those times where I was disappointed, like you said, even in the situationships <laughs> or yeah. the times where I was just disappointed in myself. Like, right. it made no sense to me. I saw no course for how I could get to the place I am today. Not that I'm better than the person I used to be, but it's just the things I longed for. I was like, God, there's no way that you can do that in me or that I even, I think we say deserve a lot. Like we don't think we're worthy enough for, for God or for that relationship, for that career, whatever it may be. I'll say it this way. I love how you share so much with your clients, um, with your readers, because you are an author. author. And um, I love how you share testimony of, hey, God has done this for me. This is what peace has looked like in this season because I think remembrance is such a great trajectory determiner. Like, well, the God that was faithful to Abraham will be faithful to Stephanie. The guy, the God that was, you know, faithful to do this, to do miracles, to heal the blind, to heal the brokenhearted, he will also heal me. And what feels silly. So I think we shame ourselves and then we also tell ourselves we're silly for feeling anything. And it just berates like what God wants to do. So I say all that to say thank you for being someone that encourages people to to ho- have hope again, to um, have joy even in the midst of questions or doubts. Like how do you in your own life walk that out or help people um, to experience the same thing? I love everything you said. And I love that verse and just – his peace is, is like nothing else that we can experience, you know, and just, um, how he's close to us in hardship. He, you know, it says, blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted and allowing him to be in that. And if anyone feels silly, it's just, to me, I'm always like, but your heart's so big. Like, of course you love so big and you loved so much. And so it's not silly because you cared and you, um, there was like, like I said, a lot of hope that can be attached to that. And so acknowledging and just giving yourself that grace um, that isn't always culturally acceptable. Maybe it's going to become more so as people are (laughs) acknowledging the impact that relationships and the broken relationships can have on our, on our hearts and lives. Um, But, you know, for me, there's been so many, so many moments like in the past and then in the present, I mean, so many disappointments that, each time we get a choice of how are we going to view this and how are we, what story am I going to tell myself about this? And I'm, I'm faced so often with this, you know, and I back before, you know, where I talk about in the book of getting dumped on Valentine's day, a couple months before my wedding day, that was such a pivotal moment where the enemy was screaming at me to just 
basically like it makes the verses like curse God and die, you know, like the, that kind of like (laughs) screaming at me of you're not worth anything. See, like everything you thought was true, but Jesus's gentle whisper kept telling me, Mm -hmm. I love you. I've never left you. And I just felt this big storm and he was my rock. Like I was clinging to him, like kind of just laying on the rock, but he had me like he was an, I wasn't, I didn't have anything left at that point. There was so much else that was, it just felt I was like, had nothing left. Um, not just the breakup, but a ton of other things that had happened in that time. And he was enough then. And I, it felt like I had nothing else. And he was enough then with nothing, you know, he's, he's enough now and he's enough for everyone. Like he, he's more than enough. And his peace that got me through the first time I ever experienced peace was actually a couple months after that. I had never even known God's peace. Cause I kept mm-hmm. putting, I had my hope set in men, even as I was engaged to a Christian man and I was walking with God and reading the Bible, but my hope was in so many other things. My hope of being a wife, my hope. And it wasn't anchored in Christ the way that it was after that. And so Mm -hmm. um, as I face new disappointments, um, things that have been really hard, Caleb and I just went through like April, we got hit with so many things that when we tell people, they're like, did that happen over 10 years? Or was that this month? Like there was just so many things of just disappointment and loss and just like, what is going on, Lord? And Mm -hmm. we, for a while, for several, I don't even know how long, I feel like we were really battling to not believe the old story, you know, like maybe God kind of gave up on us. Like maybe he doesn't have good things for us. Like maybe we should just like, you know, like why we, care so much, try so hard. Like maybe we shouldn't like, you know, we just, we're really getting planted and hit with, um, those lies. And we just both chose to keep letting God minister to us as he was Mm -hmm. healing us. We had to process a lot of loss and had to process that with Jesus. And he started just being able to tell us a new story and just be like, this isn't over. Mm -hmm. And if this, this is a no right now, doesn't mean it's a no forever. Like just because there's rejection here, doesn't mean there's rejection everywhere. There's, you know, it was just so many things. And so, um, even last night there was something that could have triggered that rabbit hole of, you know, cause we get faced with those little disappointments. So those little things that you're like, Oh, that would be awesome. And that didn't happen. Or you pray for it and you're like, so close to happen. Honestly, like every month for the last two years, (sighs) trying to get pregnant after our babies and every month, getting a negative test ever, you know, and it was, it was years before actually getting pregnant. And so each time you get that new, no, it's not going to happen. It's based again with, but am I going to believe what story am I going to believe? And Jesus, how are you seeing my story? And Mm -hmm. as I just cling to, and sometimes I literally just sit like yesterday, I was just sitting there for maybe an hour, just listening, not with my phone, not with the, just listening and God, I want you to speak to me. Like, Mm -hmm. I just want to hear what you have to say. He actually spoke some things to me about some of those disappointments that I really needed to hear. And, but I gave him the space to to speak. And sometimes when we're disappointed Mm -hmm. or things, sometimes scary to give him that space to speak, but he, he wants to, and not, not in a way, like sometimes for some people it's audibly, but sometimes it's that little whisper and it's that little, um, and it's aligned with his word. And it's just things that, you know, it's like, well, that didn't come from me. And it's just that peace that comes after that. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit of how we've, uh, trying to navigate some of that now. Yeah. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that with me, with everyone listening. And again, I mean, I know I know testimony is so powerful. One to to ground us to the fact that we're not alone for yeah. when we go through those trials, and it's like, well, the same God that that gave that miracle to this person, or that brought this blessing, or who started something, and He's telling me it's not over yet. Like that's the God I'm praying to. That's the God that hears. That's the God that mm-hmm. is there. I, it's easier said than done. I I will attest that. The times of growth and the times of dependency have been some of the times I've seen and felt his closeness the most to the point where 
when he does answer the prayer or when things do get easier, I'm like almost reminded at least now of like, oh, wait, wait Christian, don't, don't lose that. Don't lose the, the benefit that came from a grief of closeness and knowing our own frailty that gives us a chance to know his strength. Like don't lose that in the mundane. And, um, and so for me, like, that's my challenge of like, okay, well, there's, there's peace that comes to comfort, but there's also strength that comes from the struggle. And like those yeah. both coincide to produce in us, um, that, that stronger attesting to the gospel and just the, the knowing of like, this is not our final home. This is, yeah. he's not yeah. done with the story each day. We have to process that. And as you were talking, I'm reminded of, I can't tell you where I heard it. I'm sure there's a verse with it, and I'm sure I also heard it in the sermon. But someone was saying that um, how the enemy can't actually hurt God, but he can hurt what God loves the most, which is us. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, as you're saying that, I'm hearing that reflected of like, well, we love so much. My heart is here, and I feel like the enemy is just stomping on it. And yeah. the the thing that to me is like a whoa moment is like, well, how much more is that stomping on God's heart because he cares for us so much because he is that good father. Yeah. And so I'm picturing the person right now that's like, wow, this is gone. This is hitting things deep within me that I didn't even want to confront, but you guys have made me confront them. Um, whether that be through heartbreak or it's been through disappointment, how do you risk again and I think for clarity reasons, I think sometimes that's different. Sometimes it's just smiling through the next day, but sometimes it's trying again on whatever the no was. How do we risk with hope? That's such a good question. I just laugh because I'm like, that's scary. Like it's, yeah. it, it can be scary, but there is a, there's a difference, I believe, in doing it with just having the hope that you just talked about, like that this isn't the end of the story that, you know, as I'm um, in revelations right now and just reading it, you're like, this doesn't have the final say like this, this earth isn't all there is. And mm -hmm. knowing that and knowing that insurance, knowing your worth in Christ in a whole new way. I believe any disappointment is an opportunity potentially to know your worth in Christ to a new level you never knew that you needed <laughs> because you don't know you need it until, you know, it's like until that area was hit of your worth, but sometimes it's that wound that's opened that God can be like, but guess what? I'm enough. Even in that disappointment, a story of one of my clients, um, her, she found out that, um, her husband, was cheating on her and she actually um, didn't have a relationship with God. Um, not a close, you know, she went to church maybe a couple times in her life, but didn't have a relationship with God. And through this heartbreak, she was able to know God's love. She gave her life to Christ, know God's love and experience God's love. And through the worst time in her entire life has had more peace than she had even when everything was just yeah. supposedly going good in her life. And she got places healed in her heart that she didn't know needed healed. This old wound, I think I said any old wounds is a way for the enemy to pour poison or for God to mend and heal a deeper place that we didn't know to be healed, yeah. needed healed and needed that worth in him and that. So I believe who's ever listening, give that wound to God. Like he is so faithful, yeah. know your worth on a whole new level. And as we walk forward, you're not going to be the same you were if you walk differently and getting, mm -hmm. I, I, as we walk with him and learn and grow and getting stronger with him. Yes, it's a risk and it's scary to move forward, but moving forward with all the things that of knowledge and the wisdom that God's given you. And as you seek healing, if you're, you know, have done things of seeking out, you know, a good Christian relationship, the counselor or mentor and, or walking with community and really growing. And if you're growing, you're not going to be the same as you were before mm -hmm. when you went through that 
past heartbreak and you're going to know your worth on a new level and God's grace is going to be enough for whatever comes. And it's having a longing that's unfulfilled and trusting God with an unfulfilled longing. But he's just been teaching me every day more and more just about my worth in him and Mm. my love for him and that he's enough. And it's okay to want and desire things. He's a lot of times given us like the things that he's given us to desire but knowing to a whole new level of, but Lord, you, you are filling these empty places. You're filling these places. And if you give me these gifts, that's amazing. But it's absolutely amazing also that I'm walking with you and that I can bring to you the times I'm sad and be like, I have this unmet longing. This is so hard. Mm -hmm. And then bringing him the times that I'm like, but I still feel so loved, even though I don't have you know, this longing of my heart. And so he's walking with you. I love that he's walking with you step by step. You don't have to project the past or lean too forward in the future, but just know he's with you. He's got you. You don't have to project the scary past on, well, is that going to happen again? The Mm -hmm. enemy kept lying to me like, oh, you'll just have another breakup. and You'll just get dumped again a couple months before your wedding, like those lies. But God's saying, but I'm walking with you. I got you. And I believe that for anyone listening, he's walking with you and it's, it's a new thing. Every, every day is a new chance to just start over with him. So good. Yes. His mercies are new every day. The possibilities are new every day. I love that. I love that. What you're saying is like, we have that hope restored. We grow through these seasons and like it amplifies like God was with us the whole time. And I get the chance to know that he is enough, that he's at work, that he gets the glory. And yes. I'm going to, I'm going to regress now a little bit because I'm thinking of the girls. Like I literally just got dumped like last week and I'm going into college. Like I, I just wanted to know, can I eat ice cream or go on another date? But I think what I want to, what I want to end on is this, this knowing that, you know, there's only so many things that when we go through something like this, any disappointment, a breakup, a heartache, whatever it may be, anything that the world offers us is temporary. Yes. Anything the world tries to offer us is anecdotal and we'll just mask. But when we do the hard work, we allow ourselves to heal. And ultimately, when we take that to God, we will see redemption, restorations within ourselves and within our story. And I feel like that's That's my best tee up to wholehearted love. If you want to get this book, it is about overcoming barriers. It's turning our relationship with God and the relationships we have in the world um, back to a place of hope and joy after pain and loss. So Stephanie, thank you and Caleb for writing this book. Where can people find it and how can they connect with you more? Oh, yes, I have. It's right here. It's very... uh... Cute and Beautiful. they can find it on um Stephanie and Caleb.com. Um S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E. Um it's also on at pretty much anywhere that sells books. And you can connect with us on Instagram at Stephanie.rouse and then Caleb's is Caleb Jason Rouse. If you've gotten out of a breakup or having a hard time, it'd be awesome to have you a part of one of our courses or mentorships because um iron sharpens iron and people are growing together and keeping accountability you know, not going back to the things that hurt them, yes. breaking up with the things that broke them. Uh, yes, that's important too. Thank you for that plug. <laughs> yes, uh, which is so powerful, your book, and just to not go back to those things and having the accountability to do that. So we'd love to have you guys a part of that who is ever listening. So good. And she's just as delightful one-on-one as she is on this podcast. So Stephanie, thank you so much for coming back on the show. And I hope that if you're listening, it's your second or more time listening to and that you're subscribed. (laughs) And if not, please do so now or share with a friend that needs this message.